Spoiler alert, this video about spoilers contains zero spoilers. As games are turning into more of a cinematic experience with huge budgets and a whole team of scriptwriters, the plot of a game can be just as important as the game itself. Well, at least for some of us. RPGs with huge sprawling stories can be just as engaging as any TV show or movie. And what goes hand in hand with an engaging story? Huge f***ing spoilers. Let's talk about it. Over the past few years, most people who finished it would agree that Naughty Dog's The Last of Us is one of the most hard-hitting games of recent years. The game is of course the story of Joel and Ellie, two survivors of a viral outbreak trying to find hope in a dangerous, dystopian world. The game relies heavily on narrative, and the anticipation of what may be lurking around every corner for Joel and Ellie is as much part of the game than the way it actually plays. The Last of Us is immersion at its finest and due to the linear, story-driven gameplay, engaging characters and lack of any filler, it feels like a movie as much as a game at times and the plot is very important to the overall game experience. So how would you feel if you knew the ending of a game before you actually played it? Yeah, a game like The Last of Us, it just relies on its surprises, doesn't it? I mean, it's so it's quite narrow and it drives you down a certain route and it tells you a certain story. So if any of that is given to you in advance, then that's, you know, it's just going to ruin it a little bit. That very first scene for me in The Last of Us was one of the most cinematic, engrossing right. and poignant scenes in all of gaming for me ever. And if I had that spoiled before I experienced it, I wouldn't be able to say that anymore yeah. because I knew it was coming up. Spoilers would, would certainly yeah. detract from my it's, gaming experience. It's that anticipation of, oh, you know, don't please, don't please, don't please, don't. Uh, and then, you know, if it does happen, then it's a big shock. You get an emotional kind of reaction because you don't know what the outcome is. That's not about The Last of Us, that's about anything. That's the way storytelling works. Spoilers have been around since, well, forever. But thanks to the internet, everything gets shared around the world so fast and once the information's out there, it's out there. Review copies for games get sent out to trusted sources early and even though the copy is clearly private, sometimes these games can find themselves in the public eye, being streamed on platforms like Twitch, for example. Call of Duty Advanced Warfare back in 2014 had aspects of its game leaked online via Twitch just one week before release. Sledgehammer Games co-founder Glenn Schofield tweeted at the time, we took three years to make a game, kept it quiet for the fans, and it has been stolen and leaked a week before. That sucks. A real bummer. Thanks a lot. When asked if it was a big deal or not, he followed up with this. It is a big deal to us because discovery while playing is part of the fun. It will all be good, just saying. Sound a little bit butt hurt there, yeah, didn't you? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. A little bit sore about but that hurt one. Glenn. Poor Glenn. So, this raises the question for a game like Call of Duty, does it actually matter to its fans that leaks like this have come out? Why do people actually play Call of Duty? Do they play it for the for the plot? There's much better stories out there, man. If, you, if you're playing Call of Duty for the story, <laughs> I mean, some, read some books or something, yeah. just, you know, broaden your horizons a little bit. Otherwise, it depends what the spoiler is, I think. If it's, if it's telling you what's going to be in the game, what kind of what moments in the story you might equate to something else. So if you find out there's some particular set piece or something where you get to drive vehicles or something like that, that's quite a significant spoiler, isn't it? And it, you know, yeah, it does give away a bit of the plot, but it also gives a bit of the gameplay yeah. away as well, doesn't it? Most important spoiler to avoid is what actually happens in the narrative, the story itself. Yeah. Giving away what guns are in the game, what levels are in the game. It's the problem is when you know exactly what's happening to a certain character, that's where it gets. Yeah, you know, so-and-so dies in the end. That's like the classic spoiler, yeah. isn't it? Something I would consider just a, su a surprise. You know, you don't. It might, yeah. it might be a part of the story, but it might, you know, flip the flip the gameplay on its head. And I'm thinking of the Bioshock. You know, the the everybody knows the ending of the Bioshock, right? Uh, well, I better not spoil it. But it's <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> oh, right. Well, there's a huge. Okay, there's a huge spoiler at the end of Bioshock, and I'm pretty sure most of you watching this know what it is by now. But it's just a massive revelation, and it's a plot revelation, but it really affects your interpretation of the whole game. Yeah. What you were doing in the game and the way you were playing it, and that's not so much a, kind of just a plot spoiler, that is a surprise, a big surprise that's just part of the game. So if it's something like that, you know, you really want to keep that quiet, if yeah. you ask me. Thanks to the prevalence of social media these days, after years of waiting for games, you might look at one tweet or read one Facebook comment and have a decade of patience and anticipation absolutely destroyed for you. There's one uh, solution 
solution to that is don't go on Twitter. Don't so much. go on Twitter. Don't go on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. Or unfollow the people who do spoil. Oh yeah. Every single yeah. spoiler for but Game of Thrones. Don't retweet. Don't retweet spoilers, man. Why would you do that? Dick move. <laughs> Square Enix's open world JRPG Final Fantasy XV had major plot spoilers leaked a month before release, with the game's ending circulating the internet in full force weeks before the game even came out. And it's not just review copies, big mouth critics and rogue tweets that are the reason for spoilers. Sure, spoilers are damaging for us gamers, but in some cases, whistleblowing on games before release has actually helped in some way. Maybe by shedding some light on some sketchy goings on and snapping us out of the hype trance to save us a bit of cash. We're about five minutes into the video now and we haven't mentioned No Man's Sky yet. So here it comes. No Man's Sky promised us the... <laughs> How many times have I said this? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Promised us the world. Oh. Hello Games, now infamous No Man's Sky, promised us the world. But in a dramatic turn of events, it didn't really turn out that way. But what you might not know about No Man's Sky is that someone managed to grab a copy of the game on eBay two weeks before the game's release date. And if you're annoyed about how much you spent on No Man's Sky, well think about this guy. He spent $1,300 to get an early copy of the game. $1,300, by the way, that's enough to buy you 32 copies of The Witcher 3, which I would happily do. The player then went on to post loads of information on Reddit, as well as videos of his time with the game to Dailymotion, where they were watched by thousands of players. He even claimed to have beaten the game in just five or so hours. The game hadn't featured a lot of the content first promised by Sean Murray, and it was at this point that people began to become suspicious. Players are assumed that this leaked copy of the game was so empty because it was a developer's copy. But it was the completed version of the game we were seeing a full 14 days before release date. Granted the game did get a big day one patch that improved quite a lot of the problems and made the universe feel a little bit busier and more interesting. But there's no escaping that it was still a broken, empty, unfinished game that was very close to the game that was indicated by the guy who leaked it. Similar to our mate Glenn from earlier, the leaks also led Sean Murray to make a sad tweet about spoilers in which he said we've, we've spent <laughs> we've spent years filling no man's sky with surprises <laughs> fucking Sorry. oh the balls on that we've spent years filling no man's sky with surprises fucking hell. <laughs> what surprises that's him saying his game Making is mistake. full of surprises which it fucking wasn't we've spent years filling no man's sky with surprises you've spent years waiting Please don't spoil it for yourself. Oh, you <laughs> fucking weasel. Wow. It's really quite me. painful reading this tweet back. He's digging his own grave. He he is, yeah. Please don't spoil it for yourself. <laughs> Please still buy the yeah. game. That's what that says. Some people cancelled pre-orders based on the No Man's Sky leaks, but the hype for the game was unprecedented. So the point is, if we had paid more attention to these leaks, it has saved us all a bunch of time, money and disappointment. But there's one thing we still haven't really discussed. Where exactly do video game leaks come from? Data mining is a topic that some of you in the comments have talked about in our recent video about demos. And it's something that's tied very closely to the issue of video game leaks. Data mining is the act of trawling through a video game's data files in search of information like maps, models, images or even audio files. And if you want a recent example of how this kind of data mining can lead to a video game leak, look no further than Capcom's upcoming first person survival horror Resident Evil 7. The game is set to be released worldwide on January the 24th and we are looking forward to it. But over a month ago, some pretty massive spoilers were revealed from data mining the demo of the game. So what's important here is this is the demo version of the game that was released and these files that were in the demo were mined for yeah. the data and this is where all the leaks sprung from yeah so that is an important fact that you know if you don't put out a demo if you don't put your, your files in the demo in the first place then they cannot be mined and leaked so plot points names of weapons characters chapters of the game and even some info about the ending were all revealed it's a lot of information to get from nothing but a demo but what about those people who go out of the way to find out everything there is to know about a game before they actually buy it for themselves. Do you really have to play a game for yourself for the full experience or are you just happy to spoil it for yourself and just watch someone else playing it? Is that really a spoiler? We think spoilers generally suck but could be a force for good when they're used to inform or protect consumers as was the case with the No Man's Sky leaks. We're going to still get annoyed with our friends for ruining Game of Thrones for us rather than things like No Man's Sky and what's in the centre of the universe. But what if we told you what happened happens at the end of Red Dead Redemption 2 right now. Exactly. Chaos. It'd be like that scene from Event Horizon where there's like, ah, scooping out their eyes. I hope that's not Chaos. a spoiler that night. 
I hope um, you're not spoiling anything there. It's in the first 20 minutes, I hope. <laughs> So what do you think guys, are spoilers a big deal or you know what, you just don't care, you'll buy and play the game anyway, it really doesn't matter. Let us know down in the comments, remember to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, check out some of our content right here, we'll see you next time.